Maternal health is a top priority for the AHA. According to the CDC, about 700 women die from pregnancy-related complications each year in the United States. More importantly, 60% of pregnancy-related deaths are preventable. While the leading causes differ throughout the continuum of care, one preventable death is too many. In this tool, you will see videos from field leadership who will share perspectives on the issue, leading practices, and actions the field can take. We can act now. The AHA has championed supporting the health of mothers and babies for a long time. Uh, they have helped the field around designing care processes, sharing leading practices, convening conversations. And one of those conversations was around early elective delivery. The field was able to make a huge difference on the rate of early elective delivery with significant decrease uh, at the tune of over 50%. And so that was an element of work where uh, if we come together as a community around an issue, we can make a difference. Uh, I'm really proud of the call to action that we're putting forth for the field. The action plan specifically outlines four actions. Evaluate and act on your data, examine disparities, engage mothers and families, partner with clinicians and stakeholders in your community. In California, we have been so pleased with the early results from the efforts around maternal mortality in particular. So beginning with CMQCC's work in 2006 through 2013, there was a 55% decline in the maternal mortality rate while the rate continued to increase in the rest of the nation. One of the most challenging aspects of addressing maternal mortality for hospitals is in many cases it is a very rare event. Uh, it happens in one of every 10 to 12,000 births. And therefore, you can have hospitals who never experience one, depending on how many births uh, they have each year within their hospital. So really helping and training teams for that rare event. Uh, one of the other very special things that happened through this partnership and collaborative was uh, we actually embedded physicians within some of our smaller, more rural hospitals who may experience this less frequently, so they could both um, be prepared and have a better understanding of what to look for and how to ensure uh, a reversal of that maternal mortality trend. Our board and our organization think that the issue of maternal morbidity and mortality is one of the most important issues that we're facing. Uh, as an organization that has almost 80,000 births a year across seven states, we consider it an imperative that the health of moms and babies uh, is foremost in front of us. Uh, we try to accumulate all the data from all our seven states. We compare how we're doing, and we try to get the best practices possible uh, across those seven states, following a lot of the work that we've done in California, particularly to look at standards of care for all of all moms and babies across uh, our uh, 51 hospitals. Knowing some of the leading risks to women who are delivering babies, including things like hemorrhaging, hypertension, and postpartum complications, we've taken a lot of process improvement measures within our organization to ensure that women are receiving timely prenatal care, for example, in the first trimester, as well as postpartum care. And in both of those areas, we've almost had a double-digit improvement in people receiving those services and, as a result, having more successful, safe uh, deliveries. So we know quite well within our system and within our county that um, there is not e equal or equitable access to care. And so addressing those disparities in maternal health uh, is an important role and an important mission for us at Alameda Health System. One of the ways in which we do that is through a novel program called Centering Pregnancy. We've been involved in Centering Pregnancy for quite some time. Uh, we're now expanding it to other sites. It's a group-based clinical visit where we partner not just with the mother, but with other mothers who are of a similar cohort in terms of their trimesters to, uh, to provide group-based uh, counseling and support uh, for women as they're going through, whether it's their first delivery or second delivery, some of the other challenges that uh, attend 
having a, a baby and getting ready to uh, welcome a kid into the world. And that has really uh, demonstrated uh, great results for us in terms of ensuring that, um, uh, that people from all ethnic groups and socioeconomic groups feel that they are embraced by the delivery system, that we are not just caring for their physical needs, but understanding all the other social determinants that, uh, uh, that they face and that we're working to partner with them as well as their community to ensure that there's greater equity. We still have a lot of work to do, but we feel that this has been a big, uh, big part of our success. You know, this is a huge issue and a huge challenge for communities all, the, uh, all across uh, the country because disparities are real. And I think uh, we want to make sure that, um, that prevention and, um, and good health and wellness uh, are, um, are issues that are available to every single um, woman and every single person in our community. So um, again, we're partnering with um, any number of community uh, organizations, in, including churches and, and FQHCs and, um, and other uh, not-for-profits in Kansas City so that we can, we can connect these people. And it's not hard to get care. We need to, to remove the friction and, um, and, and help people uh, know that um, uh, prevention, uh, their health, should be top of mind. And that's not an easy thing, uh, always an easy thing to do, but, but I think it's, uh, that really is going to be where we move the needle and improve the outcomes. So disparities and bias are an important issue, and as, uh, particularly for our organization, uh, we look at the poor and vulnerable patient as our first service. So any technology that we have or any access that we have, our question is, how does this relate to our most poor and vulnerable patients? So we really look at the type of care we have to give regardless of where people are from and what their zip code is. Because as we've seen, the biggest determinant of your health sometimes seems to be not your genetic code, but your zip code. So we look very, very carefully to make sure, and particularly in the state of Oregon, where we do most, we do the majority of the births in uh, Oregon. We have a health plan. So we have active programs, particularly with our Medicaid program, to find women who oftentimes are going to have more challenges in their pregnancies and make sure they're getting the care that they need. I think studies need to be done around uh, disparities of care in maternal and uh, infant and childhood care uh, because there's differences not only uh, according to race, uh, not only according to age, but there's huge differences in rural versus urban access to care. Oswald Memorial Hospital works very closely with the community obstetrician, but also with the Oswald County Health Department. Through their work with the North Carolina Office of Health Disparity and Equity, we recognize that the partnerships and collaboration had to be a lot greater than we've had in the past. Out of that, we have established a health equity work group that allows us to look at the access and how to better provide that access, where community agencies perhaps may need additional support and training, and also how will we deal with the continual gap in services that, needed, that are needed in our community. The collaborative with our social workers, with the community partners, allow us at our hospitals to assess in providing local best practices and learning what others are doing as well. Collaboration truly is the piece to this success. It's critically important uh, to have the voice of mothers and families uh, involved in designing care, uh, in thinking about how we best support them to have better health. So we've seen great examples of how patient and family advisory councils can be engaged to focus on this issue of maternal health and their voice um, being a real partner with hospitals and health systems in designing care, uh, both within the walls and outside the walls. You know, the great thing about uh, working in a rural community is we don't take care of patients. We take care of our friends, our family members, our staff. Um, and, and so engaging people on those conversations is oftentimes really very easy. Everybody wants to be part of the discussion. The community hospital is usually the hub uh, of, of the region um, and, and is viewed as very important. And so people are always willing to step forward. So we ask a lot of our community. Um, we have a patient family advisory council. We have a community health advisory board. 
And then we also look externally. We are a part of every community health group that's out there. Uh, and we engage with those folks. So we're constantly bringing them together, constantly saying, here's, here's the issue that we're confronting. This is what we think. Here's where we see the options are and the pros and cons. What do you think? And what's great is they'll not only take that that perspective, that issue, and look at what we've given them, but they always end up bringing things that we don't see. And I think that's the, the, the great value of engaging the community in that way is we recognize that we don't know everything, that we don't see everything, and that at the end of the day, it's all about the patient. Well, as all hospitals have moved outside, the walls are there for hospitals. Maternal medicine is no different than a lot of other work that we're doing in the home uh, and, and uh, outside of the home and in other settings. Particularly in maternal health, one of the things that we've done is use technology. So we created an application for moms for, from the time they're pregnant to the time they deliver to the time after. They have basically got 24-7 help right on their iPhone. Uh, so when they're getting into trouble or they have a question, importantly, they don't have to come into an office, they can get the answer right on their iPhone. As we've worked with the hospitals in the state, what's really interesting is that the caregivers, the OB-GYNs and the primary care doctors are the ones that are taking a lead in these clinical uh, continuums and trying to develop the better cases of care. So actually having clinical people take the lead is really exciting. We have hospitals in 40 locations, we have clinics in 80 or 90 locations and what this does is brings all of the OB physicians together from all of those sites to talk about the innovation that that this is but also to talk about what other kinds of innovative ideas do they have how can we do other things to improve the care that they're providing for their patients and so it's all the physicians across our system we're very integrated across our system meeting together with nurses with the educators with the, the registered dietitians to talk about how do we improve the care of pregnant women, how do we assure that they get prenatal care, and how do we prevent maternal mortality. Uh, obstetricians are also the champions because they help us to identify the things that are needed. For instance, finding those initiatives and working through those initiatives to make sure that our staff are educated and ready to go to implement those initiatives. We also have a program called Building for Babies, and Building for Babies allows us to have fundraisers and working towards preventing the things that are needed to make sure those mothers receive the quality of care that they need. Our board is also very responsive because they're making sure that our frontline workers have the resources and tools that they need to provide the optima in care, and that's a win-win for all for a success story. We have family practitioners who are still very embedded in, in providing women's health um, and providing OB care uh, and, and how we do that in a way so they can maintain their competencies, um, how we do that in a way that creates value um, for the patient um, is tricky. Uh, and and the, the model continues to evolve. Um, and I think the most important thing is the people we have at the table. It's just not about having the medical leaders at the table. It's about having nursing at the table. It's about having the patient at the table and, and what they're willing to do and helping them understand the certain trade-offs. So we work with a lot of partners to ensure that we're providing quality maternal services. We realize the old adage, it takes a village, is really important in this space. And so in our local community, we work, we partner well with our uh, local public health department to make sure that we're understanding some of the uh, sort of community-based challenges that uh, uh, our, our uh, patients are facing, but also what resources are available to them. Uh, we partner with like women's infants and children programs or WIC programs around our, in our area, but they are available around the country. We partner with our leaders in public health at the state level. Uh, we work with other uh, organizations that provide resources for social determinants of health. So whether that is, uh, we have a program that works with a local uh, farmer's market actually to ensure that we're providing care and nutritional support to expectant mothers and others in the community. Uh, we work with entities to ensure or provide greater access to transportation and other services. And just depending on the needs of the, the, the mother or the family we're serving, uh, we also have a program that does an assessment of what other sorts of challenges they are facing 
housing and we pair them with uh, resources for things like housing even, uh, if that's something that's uh, necessary to ensure that both mom and baby and the entire family are safe. We are so pleased in California uh, that we have an opportunity to partner with the American Hospital Association and their efforts. Uh, clearly this is not a state-based issue, it's a national issue. And if there is work that we can do to be helpful from our learning, the California hospitals stand ready to partner with the American Hospital Association on their efforts and the continued effort to reduce mater maternal morbidity and mortality. There are hospitals all around the country that are doing incredible work to try to ensure that there's a healthy birth, mothers have a safe pregnancy, and that they're cared for during prenatal uh, visits as well as uh, delivery and then after they leave the hospital. And so the Better Health for Mothers and Babies initiative asked hospitals around the country to double down on their efforts to evaluate and act on their data, to examine disparities, to partner with mothers and hear their voices and perspectives. And also to partner with clinicians and team-based care and community-based organizations so that by engaging in those four actions that are evidence-based, we know we can make a difference.